So let's take a look at our first problem here. So our question is, what's the concentration of hydronium in pure water at 25 degrees Celsius? So um, because of the fact that uh, what we have here is hydronium, we want to write out our equation for this. Hydronium should show up due to the autoionization of water. Uh, and so for that autoionization of water, we'll end up with, with uh, this guy right here. So we have 2H2O. Um, in reversible reaction, I'm going to shrink my size down here a little bit. Uh, in reversible reaction, uh, gives hydronium H3O plus plus hydroxide uh, OH minus uh, to make this work here. And so we're trying to figure out what the concentration is here. Now, um, we know from our KW, our equation that that's going to be equal to the concentration of um, H3O plus times the concentration of hydroxide because of course remember that our concentration of hydronium and our concentration of hydrogen ions is the same and so we can go ahead and sub that in. Now we know that when we do this this is always going to be equal to Kw and at 25 degrees Celsius Kw is going to be uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. Okay so question is what's the concentration of H3O plus in pure water at 25 degrees Celsius? So um, let's see, pure water right here. Now if it's pure water then uh, we would expect that there's no additional hydrogen ions or hydronium being added. There's no additional hydroxide being added. Is that there is one of these made for every one of these made when this water decomposes like this. So the concentration should be the same for the two. And so let's just call this concentration X and this concentration X. Doing so we end up with uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 14th is going to be equal to X times X or just X squared. So uh, to work that out we'll just go ahead and take the square root of both sides. And so x should be equal to the square root of 1 times 10 to the 14th. That's just square root of 10 to the negative 14th. So that'll be half of that. So 10 to the negative 7th. So 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. We work that out. And that x should be the concentration of uh, the hydronium right here, which is what we're looking for. And so the concentration of H3O plus hydronium should be equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. Now at the same time, Next question, of hydroxide. What's our concentration of hydroxide? Well, since it's pure water, that means we're going to have the same number of each. We haven't added any other solutes uh, to this substance, no acids, no bases, because it's just pure. It should be the same thing. And so that means our concentration of hydroxide should likewise be 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. And that is molar in both cases. These are both molarities. So that's how we go about figuring out concentration using our ion product constant for water. So let's try another one. What's the concentration of hydroxide in a solution of 0.020 molar H plus? Okay. Now we still know that uh, that our Kw is still going to hold. Our ion product constant is still going to be equal to the concentration of um, hydronium, or we could say H plus. Since here we have H plus right here, we'll do it in terms of that. Because remember, they're always equal. We can interchange them uh, from a mathematical standpoint, even if we can't do it. Even if physically, it's actually hydronium and not uh, and not hydrogen ions floating around out there. So we're going to set that equals once again to our Kw, which at 25 degrees Celsius, and we said that's going to be always true uh, for this class, um, 10 to the negative 14th. So what can we know here? Well, we know it's a 0.2 molar H plus. So um, since it's a 0.2 molar H plus, we can put that in as our concentration for our H plus here. So I get 1 times 10 to the negative 14th is going to be equal to our concentration of 0.2 molar times our concentration of hydroxide right ions right here. So all we have to do is just solve this for the OH, divide both sides by 0.2, so it cancels this side out right here. 1 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by, um, by 0.2, it's 1 fifth, so multiply it by 5, so it's just going to be 5 times 10 to the negative 14th, 14th is equal to our concentration of 
hydroxide ions. And so what was the question? What's the concentration of hydroxide? There it is. 5 times the negative 14th molar would be our concentration right there. I guess technically there would be two sig figs on here because it's 0 0.20. So really we'd probably say 0 0.50 times the negative 14th molar is our hydroxide concentration. All right, next up. So we have 16 grams of hydrochloric acid dissolved in 20 liters of water. What's the concentration of hydroxide ions in the resulting solution? So maybe what we ought to do here is we should just go ahead and, um, and see if we can uh, write out our equation here, figure out what's going on. So we have hydrochloric acid, HCl. Now what we know is that this should decompose when it dissolves as an aqueous solution. Um, it is soluble. It'll decompose into the H plus plus the Cl minus, so into hydrogen ions and chloride ions. Uh, for simplification reasons, we'll write it this way, so even though in reality it really would probably be a hydronium that's going to be in here. HCl plus H2O yields H3O plus plus Cl minus. Um, so here's what we know. 16 grams of HCl dissolved in 20 liter of water. It is going to be producing hydrogen ions, so it is going to be an Arrhenius acid because it is producing those. So we do need that concentration, though, because right now we have 16 grams HCl, 20 liters of water. We don't have our concentration of H plus ions. Let's just convert. And so to do this, we know I have 16 grams of HCl. Set up our table. We want to first go from grams of hydrochloric acid to moles, not hydrochloric, yeah, hydrochloric acid, moles of hydrochloric acid. And so one mole, we have to find the mass of that. Chlorine's 35.45, hydrogen's 1.01, .01, so it ends up being just like 36.46. Uh, grams of HCl, that'll cancel out grams of HCl on both sides. Now we want to get rid of moles of HCl because what we want is we want moles of our H plus ions so we can go ahead and figure out the concentration. Now there's a one out there, there's a one out there, it's just a one to one mole ratio. Makes that quite nice and easy. So 16 divided by 36.46 and uh, see what we get on that. And so uh, ends up being about 0.4388. Three seven moles of H plus. Now we need the concentration uh, to be able to use our um, our little equation here. So uh, we know that that concentration of H plus should equal to the number of moles 0.438837 moles of H plus divided by the volume because it's molarity and it's 20.0 liters of water. I guess technically this probably should be liters of solution um, rather than 20 liters of water. Uh, but let's assume they're going to be close enough to be the same in this case. So divided by 20 liters. And so when we do the math on that. That comes out to be mm, 0 0.02194194. Molar. All right, so we have the molarity of the hydrogen ions. So now we're going to set up our Kw. We know Kw is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14th is equal to our concentration of our hydrogen ions, which we already have right here. 0, 2, 1, 9, 4, 1, 9 times our concentration of our hydroxide, because that's what we want to find concentration of hydroxide. So OH minus concentration, divide both sides by our nice long little 0 0.0219 dot dot dot, 0 0.0219 dot dot dot. And so when doing this, we end up getting a hydroxide concentration of about 4.5575. Uh, not an 8, that should be a 5, times 10 to the negative 13th molar. Itty bitty concentration. Um, and so a really, really tiny concentration here. Now I'm looking at sig figs. The 16 is infinite. The 20.0 has three sig figs. The only other thing we use. So we want three sig figs here, 4, 5, 6. So uh, final concentration here is going to be 4.56 times 10 to the negative 13th molar is our concentration of hydroxide ions.